that's not going good. All right. Hope everybody is doing well. Right on. So if you guys can hear me, uh, let me know. It seems that Instagram is working well. I don't know about Periscope. That just died on me. Let's see. Let's try it again. Let's see how this is working. I'm going to try to go live. Sometimes the studio over and I guess we are having. Ah, seems like we're having trouble over there today. Oh, it seems to be going. All right. Uh, let's see. Brussy Charlie, how you doing? Hippie of the Hills. How are you doing? If you are in YouTube land and or Periscope, shoot me a message. That's the only way that I know that you are there. As I am restreaming this, I only notice when you guys show up in the comments. So if you are over there, go ahead and shoot me a comment. Let me know that you are live over there. Tara Marie. Hippie the Hills, Brussy Charlie. You know, I wanted to thank you guys. I got a few um, messages. I have, I've gotten a few messages over the weekend from people that I hadn't noticed who've been watching the show. Uh, and as you can imagine, so I'm streaming to three different places, YouTube, Periscope, and Instagram. And last week was probably, oh no. Yeah, looks like there's no audio over there. So I'm gonna try to reload that. Yeah, but does, uh, So, I, I just reset it over in Periscope land. We'll see how that works. So anyway, I want to thank you guys. It's Memorial Day. I hope everyone has, those of you here in America who celebrate Memorial Day, I hope you're grilling out. I hope you're with family. I hope that uh, everything is, is going quite well for you guys. Uh, okay. <clears throat> but now just all fell out. So, so we're having we're having some issues over in Periscope land. Boo. Well, that's going to happen from time to time. So guys, to so with that, it is Memorial Day. I hope you're with family. I hope that you have you type like a chicken. Yes, yes, I do type like a chicken. And not only that, Tolly, um, it is, it's nothing that you want to be around for because it's quite unnerving for a lot of people. <laughs> and you should expect some Periscope people as they are coming over because it's not working out so well over there. Free Candy, how are you doing? Joel Mackley and your Advancer X, how are you doing in Montana? All right, so it is Memorial Day. I hope you guys are celebrating. I hope that you have family around. I'm going to do my best. Uh, AJ and I have a lot of work to do this week. Uh, we wanted to get started early. And people are still complaining over there. I'm just going to close that so I'm not even looking at it anymore. Um, where was I at? So, yes, Memorial Day, please do celebrate. Remember our fallen soldiers in all the wars that we have. I was reading up today, it seems that Memorial Day used to be called Decoration Day. And not only that, it is, it was, they started observing after the Civil War. So it's mostly for, the, for those wars. L.A. Jen, welcome to Instagram. <laughs> Yeah, and here's the and here's the thing for you, Jen. You you can't use your band hammer over here in in, uh, in Instaland. Yeah, it doesn't work over here. It's only for Periscope. So yes, I hope you guys have family. I hope you're surrounded, 
and I hope that you all uh, have some cookout if you can. <laughs> Jen, Jen says she likes the Instagram crowd, so how about that, guys? I um, hope everyone had a good weekend. I wasn't, I, you know, I was debating whether or not to go live because it is a, a holiday for us here in America, but at the same time, um, it's it being the holiday. Um, it's, it's one that some people observe. Uh, my father was a veteran. Um, much of my family on my dad's side had all fought in, uh, in certain wars. And, uh, for myself, you know, I do have plans today. I have a full schedule. Uh, I certainly observe Memorial Day, but it was just one of those things where it was, it was, I talked to, <laughs> I talked to LA Jen last night and I told her I was going live and she was excited. So I said, that's it. I guess I'm going live. As long as you guys are going to be here, as long as you guys want me to go live, well then I'm going to go live. So that's the situation. All right. So guys, I wanted to come in today. I want to read you a, um, a paragraph from this book. This book is called Don't Take Yes for an Answer, and it's by Steve Hers. And it is going to be, uh, it's going to, he's going to be one of the guests who are coming on to the show. And with Don't Take Yes for an Answer, he lays out an argument of why we're having a hard time with social skills. Now, Steve Hers is a he's a broadcasting agent so he's a he's a sports agent for broadcasters and he helps broadcasters get to that next level to get to the ESPN to get the prime time the big sports jobs and there's a lot to go with that you need to be relatable you need to have a, a voice that resonates that people can listen to you easily I tend to not really have that. I have a voice that can be very grating for some people. But you know, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing right now to get better. You know, communication isn't something that you see a target and you hit it. Communication is something that you work to get better at. You can always be better. Even the best and the tops in sales and communication and advertising, you work to squeeze out that extra percentage, that, that extra bit. Self-development, to me, is much in the same spirit. There's no boxes that you're checking off. There's boxes that you are maintaining. There are gradients and, and percentage points that you're looking to increase your output. It is, it is a journey, and it is a, a, it's a quest for knowledge and beauty. And that knowledge and beauty can be taken from other people, but at some point, but at some point that knowledge needs to be not only to, to experience it, to seek it out, knowledge and beauty, but then at one point after you find that, that you are experienced and then you put into the world knowledge and beauty. And that's what's very important. All of us should be on a search and a quest for knowledge and beauty. Th that makes the world special to all of us. There's always, uh, and, and that beauty and knowledge that you're gonna find is going to continue to, to emanate as our experience collectively grows. But at some point, not only are you the seeker, you are the one who is delivering that knowledge and that beauty. And if you go on a quest for knowledge and beauty, what you will find is adventure and yourself. And when you find adventure and yourself, then it is your duty to then create and express that quest, ex to express your emotions and in the quest for knowledge and beauty. So with that, Stephen Hers wrote this book. He says, don't take yes, for an answer. And he lays out an argument for our society and how it is a much gentler society 
where you don't get the truth anymore. And because you don't get the truth anymore, it's difficult for you as a person on your quest for knowledge and beauty to be able to know where you must strive harder, where you come up short. If you don't hear that from people, if you don't get any criticism, if you wall yourself off from that, how are you going to know where you can be better? How are you to know those areas that you can grow? And, and so one of the things, and he brings up this point where in our, in our youth at school, everyone wins. Everyone, there's, there's no, no child left behind. Everybody, if you participate, you get a trophy. If, if you try, you get a pat on the back. Everyone makes the team. Now, he lays out the same argument that Dr. Stephen Hayes had laid out, that these self-esteem rallies, these, these initiatives to pump your kids full of self-esteem has the opposite effect, where now they're afraid to fail. Well, that same, that same initiative in the schools has now found its way into everyday work life. I, well, I'll get to that. So, Joel Mackley writes, how do you know what the difference is between criticism that's good to listen to and criticism from people who are also and their own issues, agendas, and might, and might be bullshit. Well, we'll get into that. But those, but those initiatives in the schools to soften up all the children and make sure that everyone gets a trophy and make sure that everyone gets, part, participates, uh, <clears throat> and, and, and this pumping the self-esteem into these children makes them, has the opposite effect where now they don't wanna fail. Now they don't want to put themselves out there because they've never had any criticism growing up. They've never had the opportunity to find out where they have shortcomings and where they need to try harder and, and what they need to do in order to try harder. Now, if you've been following along in the, in, in the educational system, I'm sure a lot of you already know this. And there was a great episode that we did with Stephen Hayes called Self-Esteem is Bullshit. It's a, it's a great episode and he lays out th this, this whole argument. Now, Stephen Hers goes a step farther. That, those initiatives that were set out in school to make our children fragile... And as I think a lot of you know that there's the, the new anti-fragile initiative going on where we're trying to help our children. But this, this self-esteem initiative has went and found its way into the workplace where now you have HR departments who rather than fire you will just tell you that they're downsizing or that your department is cutting back and there's no place for you anymore. This way, they can get out of trouble and, the, and, the, and everything that goes along with a unlawful firing. And so there has been, these HR departments have been put together to keep their company safe because of the drama and the pushback that would happen from an unlawful firing. So now, this initiative of participation trophies is now finding its way into adulthood. And we have, we have adults running around who are never been told that they, are, that they have been fired, that they have been told that their department has shrunk and there's no place for them in it. They've been told that their job has been has disappeared in this company and therefore they're gonna have to move on they've never been fired they've never been told that your work is is not good enough and because of that they have moved on to their next job 
without understanding that they can be better. And let me read you this. This blew my mind. So Stephen Hers has noticed that all these professionals have never been told you're fired. They've never been told that they're not good enough. So they're just taking their, their incompetencies into their next job. And they just can't figure out why is it they're not getting tried. Let me read you this. Lots of organizations point to coaching as proof that they are a kinder, gentler work environment. See that? We put all this coaching together for you because we're a kinder company and we care about your, uh, we care about your development, right? Now, and is it part of the role of the supervisor and HR department to conduct performance evaluation and then work with the employee to shore up their weakness? This is on paper, sounds really good, isn't it? But maybe, but in reality, many HR professionals won't tell you what the issues or problems that surround your performance and how your manager feels about you because that is too risky. As the head of the HR major communications company once told me, employees who need coaching are usually be, being coached out. So if you're getting coached at your job, this means that they have already decided that you're out of there. You getting this coaching is softening the blow. They're, they're showing their employees that we're, we're investing in you. That's the trick. So, the, the employees who need coaching are usually being coached out. The formal performance improvement plan is often code for, you might want to start looking for a new job. You hear that? So if you're in this coaching program, this is their way of letting you know you might be wanting to look for a new job because there are shortcomings in your performance and we're gonna soften the blow by, by giving you coaching uh, and then that, the next thing you know, your department's being shrunk. So, you might wanna be starting looking for a new job. And still, many employers wait too long to fire employees who aren't performing up to par. No, just because you're keeping your job doesn't mean that you're excelling. <laughs> I'm going to read that again. Just because you're keeping your job doesn't mean that you're excelling. They certainly don't feel like they have <clears throat> they certainly don't feel like they have the time to do it or at least to the extent that some employees might need to perform at their best. And so they let their employees so they let their employees go to the equivalent of it's not you, it's us. You see how that works? It's the same as dating. When you have somebody that you're dating that you don't want to drop too hard on, you say, listen, you know, it's, it's not you, it's me. This is the same thing. Listen, it's not you and your bad performance. It's us. We're just downsizing. Yeah. <laughs> Do you believe this? And... <clears throat> It's not you, it's me. Dooming the employee to repeat the same mistakes over and over again. You see, this is why developing yourself is so important because no one is going to tell you anymore that your performance blows. No one is going to tell you anymore that your performance is not up to par. Why? because they're scared of retribution. They're scared of being sued. They're scared of getting themselves in trouble because that's the where, this is where our society is right now. And now you're stuck getting downsized out of the company and using and not putting, finding yourself in a position to develop and better your skills. Do you believe that? So, here we have a school system that is now softening our children so that they don't take any hits, so that they don't take 
any criticisms. And, and so they, everyone can get a participation trophy and we'll pump them full of self-esteem. And now these children are gonna be afraid to get any criticism. That has now not only followed your children into college, Jonathan Haidt wrote The Coddling of the American Mind, where he demonstrates and lays out the argument why that self-esteem movement has now followed our children into college. And now I just showed you how that movement has followed us into adulthood. And if it follows you in adulthood, you now have been coddled through your whole life into your career. And if you want to develop, you have to find it on yourself to find where your shortcomings are and get to work. Why? Because no one around you is going to tell you what the problem is. No one around you is going to be honest because everyone is too afraid to be an adult anymore. Everyone is too afraid of being honest. Listen, it is difficult to be honest with everybody at the all times. And, and you can't expect people to be honest. In fact, when, and this goes to Joel Mackley's comment, when you do get criticism, Look at, notice Joel's question. How do we know good criticism from bad criticism? You know, it seems that we found ourselves in a point where not only can we not separate facts from fiction because alternative facts and everything else that we have, everyone's truth is subjective now. We also at our, are at a place where we don't even know where what criticism is is welcoming and what criticism isn't going to help us. And I think this is why self-development is more important now than ever, because we have found ourselves in a place where if we just hear fluffy, good things all the time, well, why are we going to improve ourselves? And the only way that we're going to be able to do this is to look at people who we admire and we, we aspire to be and Find places where we can contrast ourselves to heighten our performance. This takes a critical eye. It takes a critical eye, but also some key factors so that you can separate places where you can aspire, where you can get better, where you can grow, and and what is uh, not helpful or detrimental. That is on you. You have to build that. Now, I'm not going to go into it here because I don't have time. However, a few weeks ago, I put out three videos. They are all archived on YouTube. Those videos are tools for self analysis, part one, two, and three, where I laid out the complete argument and tools that you need to decipher what is the truth in an age where everyone is going to lie to you, including people who love you, and most importantly, yourself, and how to begin to scrutinize all of those thoughts and build a reality and a worldview around those that, that open doors for you rather than closing them. All of those videos, self-analysis, one, two, and three, are on YouTube. Free Candy says, most people are too afraid to give me honest criticism. Ugh, jerks. Maybe you're just too badass to get any criticism, Free Candy. Maybe you are above it. <laughs> you're too awesome for criticism. Presley Charlie gives us a smiley face. Well, thank you very much. And I'm gonna go through this um, and see what you guys will say. I hope you have a wonderful Memorial Day and Listen, guys, know that no one is going to tell you the truth. We're going to have Steve Hers on the show. And we just we have now documented the bubble wrap that we've been surrounded with 
since birth. And it's following us into our careers. We need to get away from this stuff. Uh, you type like a chicken. <laughs> Tally, I can always expect you to give me a hard time. I want to thank you guys and thank you for following me over from Periscope to Insta with that blocking out. Thank you, Jen. I appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Yes, well, the Jen says, I do like the Instagram crowd because you guys are rad. That's right. Hola from Arizona. Well, hello to you, Fortis. All of my grandfathers served. Yes, absolutely, and so have mine. It's a great voice, and the hair is extra special. Well, thank you, Jen. I appreciate that. Estefan, how you doing, buddy? Joel, we'll get into that maybe this week, but uh, join me on the uh, network, and we'll, we'll chat about it. All right, guys, if you enjoyed what I had to talk about here and you want more, check out the Communication Accelerator. Uh, we have some other big announcements going on this week, but the Communication Accelerator is always our best bits from our online classes, our live training programs, and our expert guests over the last 14 years. And if you check that out, you can, you can get a free month over in the network, and we can talk about everything that's in it. How rad is that? And, and... Let's chat about where we can improve, where we can be better. Is that rad? Jen says it's stunted people. It has stunted everyone. Aaron Morosky. Aaron Aggie, how are you this morning? <clears throat> Joel, call it, <laughs> we call it the personal improvement plan. Yes, that's what it was in here. The PIP, the personal improvement plan. The personal improvement plan to follow your ass out the door. That's what it is. You believe this? That's right. That's where we found ourselves. This is a sort of sort your shit out message. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you guys are great. Uh, awesome. Thank you, Telly. All right, guys. I get to head out. Have a wonderful Memorial Day. And, uh, and, uh, and, and let's have a great week, guys. I will see you tomorrow. Thanks for being here. Cheers.